This video will demonstrate how to set the tension on the drive belts in the base of the FAMEG IM5, IM8, and IM10 mixer. Before doing any inspection or maintenance work on these machines, always be sure to disconnect from electrical power first and keep that power off until the job is done and the protective covers are back on the machine. This machine has had its bowl removed. We have it sitting on a table consisting of a piece of plywood, heavy plywood sitting on saw horses, and we have the head of the machine clamped to the plywood. The cover, bottom cover of the machine has been removed. That's with four Phillips head screws. Uh, when you put those screws back in, it's best to do that with a hand screwdriver, not a power driver to avoid breaking those screws off. So covers off in this machine and we have pre-loosened this bolts. There are two bolts that hold the tension uh, for this secondary pulley that we're gonna look at first. Two bolts, one is here and the other is out of the camera's view over on this side. Uh, you would normally have to loosen those up before you start your tensioning uh, work if you find that uh, it's necessary. And you wanna loosen those bolts up just a little bit, don't make them very loose, just loose enough to slide because we don't want the pulley to be able to get crooked while we're tensioning it. Uh, if we do that, then it'll throw off the tension when we tighten them back down again. The bolts holding this whole bolt assembly tight are socket head bolts. So they have a five millimeter hex socket recess in the center of their heads. Our access to these is from gonna be from what's underneath now. Uh, in this plate right here, which is the bowl mounting plate, there are four holes. The mixer bowl feet fit into those holes. Right now, of course, the, the bowl is out. So we can reach up through two of those holes and have access to the heads of these two bolts. You need to experiment with which two holes in the plate need to be aligned with those bolts because we need to have the two holes lined up with the heads underneath and at the same time not have a spoke of this pulley blocking our access to this bolt or this bolt. So there's four different ways to turn that plate and have the two holes aligned for the bolt heads. Turn it around, line it up with the bolt heads and then be sure that you, you pick a spot where you have access here that's not blocked by one of these spokes. The uh, wrench that we're gonna use on top, this is a combination wrench. It is possible to get a wrench like this onto these nuts, but it's almost impossible to put enough pressure on that wrench then, enough turning force, to get those nuts sufficiently tight. Therefore, we're not gonna use, we don't recommend using a wrench like this. So on top, we're gonna to wanna to use a wrench like this. This is a 3 8 inch drive ratchet wrench. We have a two and a half inch extension we'll go on here. And then this is a crow foot wrench. It's a bit of a specialty wrench. You may not find one at your local hardware store, but you can order one online pretty inexpensively. You can get a set too, but that would cost more. So this is a 13 millimeter wrench and that's what's required for the nuts at this end. The tension we're going to exert on this pulley and belt with a clamp like this. We're gonna show you the exact model that we recommend. It's a very heavy duty uh, one-handed clamp. It'll exert a lot of force much more than a medium or light duty bar clamp will do. And it's also important to have a clamp that you can remove the end on and turn it around, put it on the other end and use it as a spreader rather than a clamp. On this first pulley, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use it as a spreader. Also note that while this end has a rubber cover on it, We've taken the rubber cover off of this and it just slips on. You can put it back on again afterward if you want for other jobs. Uh, I want to keep the rubber pad on the other end to keep uh, from marring the machine. But uh, this, this end, we're going to take that off. So then begin here by 
positioning the clamp in like this, be sure that your uh, bar of your clamp is level because we don't want to put a twist on the pulley. We don't want to push the um, pulley edge upward or downward. We just want to push it straight sideways. Now we have a little bit of tension on there. I'm going to give it a little bit more because I know that that's still uh, quite a bit too loose. And then we have a little device that consists of a large paper clip that's been bent into an L shape here, spread a little bit at the bottom, and then we have just a two inch piece of duct tape to hold this to the base of the mixer, like so. This needs to be positioned so that you have a one eighth of an inch gap between the inside of the belt and the paper clip. And the paper clip needs to be positioned at mid span of the belt, which means halfway between where the belt touches this pulley and the point where it touches the other pulley here at the other end. So halfway in that span of belt, that's where we want this position with a 1 8 inch gap right in here. It is important that that be an accurate 1 8 of an inch gap. So we suggest that you find some piece of wood or uh, object that is an eighth of an inch thick to use that as a thickness gauge to be sure that you have that gap set to one eighth of an inch. Then we're going to use a device that um, you can obtain from Pleasant Hill Grain or you can easily make your own. This is just a three sixteenths inch diameter steel rod. You can get it from a hardware store. Um, I think it's 17 inches overall, but it's, 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 three, and a half, it's three inches here three inches here, a little loop in the end, and it's 10 and a half inches in length from corner to corner here. And we need this because we have to reach down over the edges of our mixer base so that our scale is exerting a true sideways, straight sideways pull on the belt. Then with that hooked over there, we pull I can see that I have just now, I'm just grazing my paper clip and I have a four pound pull. So it's not enough. I need to have a tension here of 5.2 to 5.5 pounds to achieve a 1 8 inch deflection. I'm going to tighten my clamp or my spreader here a little bit more. Now here I have 5.3 pounds. So, in good shape. Now I'm going to reach underneath to put my Allen wrench up through one of the holes in my mixer mounting plate. Um, I do want to go back and mention one thing that uh, when you're doing your pull sideways on this belt, be very sure that the belt stays perfectly vertical. If it twists while you're pulling with your scale, then you will reach the paper clip before you should. You won't have a two one eighth of an inch deflection. So make sure your pull is straight sideways. That keeps your belt there perfectly vertical and you get an accurate reading. So now I am back to putting my Allen wrench into the head of the bolt from below. Okay, put that in place. Then I reach around with my pro foot wrench on my ratchet. Got my ratchet turned the wrong way. Here we go. And I'm going to torque this down. Uh, this kind of wrench in this sort of position does require two or three adjustments because you don't get a very big swing each time. So I have that good and tight now. If you aren't familiar with uh, bolts and just how much tension they, they can take, how hard, to, how hard to turn them, then may need to enlist the help of somebody who has some experience with that and knows the feel. Uh, you want these things good and tight. Of course, you don't want to strip the threads, but you do want a good, tight nut on here 
so that this assembly doesn't slip on us, requiring us to have to do this operation again right away. So I have this good and tight now. Now, a word about these bolts. It's very important that we don't strip the heads out of these bolts, the, uh, the socket uh, head out of the bolt. To avoid that, be sure that your hex wrench has good, sharp edges. Uh, it's easy for these wrenches to get rounded off on their little tips. So I would recommend using a brand new wrench. If you don't have one, go out and get one. They're very inexpensive, five millimeter metric um, hex wrench like this. And then be sure that you hold the wrench squarely in the head of the bolt and insert it fully. And it's very important to remember not to try to turn the bolt with the hex wrench. Do your turning on the nut, not the bolt. Turning on the bolt or trying to turn the bolt with the hex wrench will almost certainly strip out the bolt if you're starting with a tight bolt. Uh, when you're starting with a loose bolt, the same thing can happen when you're tightening it. But uh, if you try to, to loosen one of these things, then you're almost certain to strip those heads out. And if you strip the head out of one of these bolts, when, it's, when the bolt is tight, then the bolt will probably have to be uh, removed by grinding its head off. So you may have to take it the whole machine to a, a mixer to a machine shop to have that done. Certainly something that uh, we want to avoid. Well, that's the whole process for that secondary belt. I'm going to take my paper clip out of here. The other drive belt is done in pretty much the same fashion. These are six millimeter holes in these three bolts. You loosen these three up just a little bit if this belt needs to be tensioned. Put your clamp in the clamping or pulling uh, configuration again. Slip it over the end of the drive shaft of the motor, which doubles as the pulley. Pull that toward the end of the machine. Then this belt, uh, you can use something like the paper clip, but it's very close to the surface of the housing, so it's really easier to just make a little pencil mark one eighth of an inch from the inside surface of the belt. And then you can look straight down on that and you can see when your belt uh, is pulled over by your scale, uh, one eighth of an inch at mid span. And this belt needs to be tighter. This needs to be at at nine and a half to 10 and a half pounds of force to achieve a one eighth of an inch deflection. Then tighten this bolt up, tighten this bolt up. You can't tighten this one up very well without first releasing your clamp, but if you have this bolt tightened down, you can release this and it won't come loose. Then tighten this one back up again with those finish you just put your cover back on and you're good to go